Hello, it's Rachel from Central Texas Zone 8B, and I'm going to be doing a uh, property garden tour. This is, for those of you who are new to the, newer to the channel and don't know, this is my in-laws. Um, property. It was a blank slate um, at the start of uh, 2020, which is when I started gardening. I actually started planning out stuff um, at the end of um, 2019. And um, so all of this I've done myself. It is on uh, drip irrigation, but I need to redo the drip irrigation. It doesn't, um, parts of it don't work. Um, so a lot of it is not on um, irrigation at all. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around, walk around and show you um, what, how all this, uh, what, what's here and how it survives in this um, blistering uh, heat we have going on. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, go ahead and get started. Okay, so here is um, the front section of the garden. Um, I just came through and we needed all the, not we, yeah, we needed all the, uh, we had a, had a ton of um, weed grass growing in there. There's still a ton, um, but yeah. And, you know, I have two, uh, I'm hoping that these um, two ground cover juniper, I believe it's called all gold, um, will, I just planted those this year. I'm really hoping those will fill in the space here, be some evergreen interest even in winter and I think I'm going to replace this, um, it's a palace castle, um, with, uh, something evergreen as well so that there's just some interest during winter time. Um, but I'm hoping that these, um, junipers cover this whole area and help suppress weeds. Um, I've just added in also some roses that are, um, okay, sorry about that. I had to go get my, the muffler for the wind, my speaker. Um, Anyhow, where was that? Okay, so this uh, earlier this year, I added in some drift roses. I want to replace this with a evergreen, I think, at some point. Um, I had had one of these on this other side over here, but it didn't come back um, after last winter. So I have Russian sage, and I just added in this um, Mexican honeysuckle. The Lysianthus, I used to have um, another pink one over here. Uh, the pink always seems to kind of die out for me. I don't know, the purple's doing really well. The white is just out of bloom, you can see, but the purple's definitely doing the best. I love the pink the most. I just love that soft, pretty pink, but it always starts to, one half of it starts to die out. And then that's what happened to the first one too. So we'll see if that one lives. Um, I've added in um, some, what is that called? Copper Canyon Daisy, that's just taken off. There's some Lantana, there's some evergreens back here. I'll swing this around. The Canna Lily just added in at the beginning of this year. I do like that um, contrast in foliage color. I have a um, Juniper, I don't remember what type. Um, the Salvia, the, um, the what is it called? Uh, I'll, I'll put the name below. below. I, can't, I can't remember right now at the top of my head. It's been slower to come back this year. Usually I feel like it's like a lot taller at this point. Um, I have a um, coral knockout rose I planted right there because my mother-in-law really likes those. And then this is an iceberg rose right here. And that thing is very carefree. Highly recommend if you like, if you want a big um, bush rose and you like white blossoms, um, this one is not on irrigation really at all. And it's, you know, it's probably about four feet right now. Um, and it's just incredibly carefree, no fuss or trouble from that at all. Um, I've added in some, uh, red hot poker plants. Actually, I think this is some orange blooming variety. I don't remember specifically the name. I've just added in a white blooming, um, butterfly bush it um it's i need to come and clip off all the blooms because it's uh they're all spent and they're look, looking pretty brown um and i also probably need to water it <laughs> yes um here is an, a little uh kind of salvia area have going on most of what is blooming is 
um, in the blues and purples family. I do have a red, a pink, and I think a white in there, but those are not in bloom at the moment. This area over here is my, sorry if there's other construction noise, I think they're building something in the uh, house uh, way back at the back of the property. I don't know if you can see, it sounds like it's coming from that house. But um, anyhow, uh, this is a kind of drift rose section. I created this little dry riverbed um, and it goes back all the way, kind of back behind that bloom, giant bloom mass right there. Um, and then I planted um, a bunch of different colors of drift roses all around that. So it's my little drift rose section. Um, there's a lot of weeds. <laughs> this uh, was supposed to be a yarrow section. I do have a lot of yarrow, but this uh, um, Greg's Miss Flower is huge and taking over everything. So it may eventually choke out the um, yarrow that is there. Um, and I just leave, I usually typically leave the old heads on the yarrow just because I think it they're kind of interesting looking. Um, and I think um, the wildlife generally likes to pick up them. So anyhow, let's see here. Over here in this section is um, a lot of salvia, a lot of, I generally sprinkle around some seeds. I put in some dwarf cosmo seeds. It's in all different colors. And then the, um, purple basil. I love the blooms on that. I think it's incredibly ornamental and just a beautiful uh, flower in general. Um, not even the fact that it, you, it's edible and stuff. Um, let's see, I just added in some little baby lantanas. They are doing okay. One of them is, I don't know if you can see, it's not. One of them, uh, it's not doing so good, but it does have a green sprout at the bottom. So we'll see how that does. Uh, the, I really like this powdery pink gumfrina. I grew it from seed. Uh, I want to say it's called raspberry, but it, I feel like that's wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I really like it. I didn't realize it how short it would be. Normally the gumfrina that I grown has been a lot taller, uh, but this particular variety is quite short. So I kind of made the mistake of putting it further back instead of up closer to the front of the walkway like I normally do. Um, this is a bank of gara I have here. It's not currently in bloom at the moment. Um, usually it's, it's really beautiful. There's a white one in the middle and then it's surrounded by pink ones. Um, the bee balm is out of bloom right now too. And this is, um, I want to say it's purple skull cap. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think that's what it is. Um, and then on this side, I have a uh, lyrical rose, um, salvia. And then on the other side I added, I think it's called midnight rose salvia. They look almost identical when they're in bloom. Um, and then I have a bunch of just different things. I have a drift rose here. This is, um, some more, um, Gumfrina that I grew from seed, and as you can see, is quite a bit taller than the other powdery variety. Uh, I have a pink knockout rose here. This is a, a, I don't know, some kind of pink drift rose. It's out of bloom right now. I don't know if you can see all the old bloom heads all over it. Um, so when it does bloom, it's really, really gorgeous, but um, not in bloom right now. I have three little bush crepe myrtles that I'm growing right here. I think they are light powdery pink blooms. They have not bloomed for me yet, but I'm really excited to see those bloom. I got them online from a crepe myrtle company that I think is called, literally called the crepe myrtle company. Um, yeah. So I was trying out that company, see if I could find some interesting, um, types of crepe myrtles. So we'll see how I like it. Um, my favorite trees panning around here is reblooming again. This is the fragrant mimosa. It has cute little powder puff blooms, but the plant is covered in terrible, terrible thorns <laughs> and they will catch you if you walk by. So I do need to probably trim this up at some point so that these branches don't come too close to the pathway. Like this one, this little branch right here is, is getting too close to the pathway for sure. So anyhow, um, yeah, there's that. This is a, a, a rose called Maggie. It's not, it has one little bloom head up here, but this is one of my favorite roses. This is tiny. Normally they're these big fat 
cabbage roses kind of like about this big and just really deep purpley pink color and just really beautiful. So Maggie is one of my, so far one of my favorites. It's supposed to get quite big. So I, yeah, we'll see <laughs> how big. I think it's supposed to get like eight feet tall. So I might have to move it, but I, I so far I really love that one. Um, I have, this is, this is the cor another coral knockout rose and then that's a light pink one. So I have two light pink ones and I have three coral because um, my mother-in-law really likes the coral ones. Um, so she asked me to plant more of those. So I planted two more. I have a um, desert willow here. You can see it's got those beautiful blooms on it. And then I have another one. You kind of can't really see it, but it's on the other side of this mimosa here. Let me step out so I don't step on any plants. Um, I have three Shoal Creek Vitex up front. There's one, two, and there's a third one right over there. I just trimmed those up so they're more tree-like. My goal is to have them be, you know, tree, very tree-like and, you know, plant all the way around them. So every year I'm trimming them up a little bit more and um, they're slowly getting there. This is, I think, their third year in the ground. Um, and they've grown just so much since I first put them in. I mean, just incredibly um, huge now compared to, it's, it's kind of crazy what, how, how much they've grown in the last few years that they've been in the ground. Um, but anyhow, uh, it's kind of, it's also kind of funny cause they bloom like this one always blooms first and then this one, then the one over there. Um, instead of just like, I would think they'd all bloom at once, but they kind of bloom in, in the succession. So, uh, I have a, two bush forms of crepe myrtles right here and another, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, purple diamond or diamond crepe myrtles. It's the one with the, the really super dark foliage. I think that one's either light pink blooming or white blooming. Uh, it's been struggling. Uh, I was kind of hoping by this point it would be a lot bigger and you'd kind of be able to see the foliage more through the front of the garden. If standing over here, you'd be able to see that kind of dark purple foliage right there, but it's taking a while to, you know, um, take off. So right here is a bank of, um, rock rows. I want to, I want it, the rock rows to fill in this whole area. So we'll, you know, add to that and, and stuff, um, throughout every year, but right now I'm not going to add any more. just going to let it do its thing. Um, oh wow. There's blue bonnets blooming. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, this, uh, next year I've tried several things to cover this trellis nothing's really kept. I think I'm going to try some cross vine, uh, next spring. So that's, I think what I'm going to try to cover that one with. I'm going to, there's uh, this trellis over here. I'm going to move my, um, Thomas Graham climbing rose to the other side. And it has, I have a, um, Belinda's dream climbing rose that I moved from my house on this side and it's doing really well there. Um, it's grown quite a bit since I put it, uh, since I transplanted it earlier this year. Uh, I had sprinkled in a bunch of Cosmo seeds and they had all sprouted, but now I only have like two left because I have not been here to water things. Um, and this, this drip hose thing system does not work. So I need to redo all of my irrigation, really. I mean, honestly, it just, the whole thing was a mess. It was my first time doing irrigation and I uh, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and I, you know, I, I watched a lot of tutorials before I did it, um, but I think for this space and um, the fact that this is on well water, uh, uses well water, it just kind of, maybe the pressure is different or something. I'm not entirely sure what went wrong, but it doesn't, it, the pressure is really um, funky and it blows a lot of the smaller tubing. I used the fourth inch tubing. I don't know if you can see some here. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I use a lot of the fourth inch tubing, drip tubing, and it just doesn't seem to make it through. And then um, it blows a lot and it, uh, of, of the blows, the water pressure blows out a lot of the um, places where I connect it in. And I've had to like tape it up a lot. And then also some of these, I don't know if this is just because the, the 
this particular brand isn't good or, or, or what, but some of these um, become huge like water spouts um, and all the water leaks out of those, those play or sprays out of those places instead of kind of nicely dripping through the line. So yeah, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what is going on, but I think I need to move away from the fourth um, inch strip tubing for this area and go up to like half inch strip tubing. And so replace all the fourth, fourth inch stuff. As you can see, even the, the Grubeckia is sad <laughs> and that stuff's tough. So anyhow, yeah, I need to replace it and stuff. I just don't know when I'm going to get around to that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I did have some lily bulbs come up. I think these are called tiger lilies. They don't look super healthy. This bloom's already pretty spent. Oh, why does this keep doing this? There we go. This bloom's already pretty spent. Um, but, oh, ants. That came up surprisingly. I was not expecting that to live. I had planted bulbs in there like a long time ago and then expecting to add drip to this and I just never did. <laughs> so then the lily bulbs all kind of, I thought they all died, but then this, this one came up and then I planted in a bunch of, um, blue bonnets in there and they're reblooming. <laughs> so surprise. Um, I did finally get around to like mowing and all that. So that's exciting. Um, I have over here a little, um, tiny mimosa tree. I want to say it's, it was the chocolate variety one, but it like, I've seen the chocolate variety of the mimosa ones in nurseries and it's always a lot darker foliage color. This one is darker than the, the, uh, the regular one, but it's not as dark as the, like the chocolate ones I've seen. I'm not sure if that's just because it's so tiny or what, but anyhow, it's, um, it's not, it doesn't seem to be the chocolate variety. Okay. Moving on. There's the seeding area out here that I massively need to weed. This little bed here um, has Mexican uh, honeysuckle in it and uh, euphorbia. I, wait, is it called euphorbia? Um, no. I'll put the name down below. I always forget what it's called. Um, but I, I really love that, this plant. Let's see. Uh, I think one of it's called as a gopher or something, or I don't know exactly what. But um, I don't. This does not have any water to it. Um, I have killed quite a few other things here. That one I planted about three years ago and has done amazing. So I went ahead and added an, one in on this side. Um, this bed is supposed to be my agave bed kind of thing. The thing that they're, they're I planted a bunch of agave uh, last year, little, little pups that I got for free from my friend Liz. Thanks Liz, shout out to you if you're watching. And quite a few of them are still alive, but they're very, very tiny. Um, and then of course this, um, softly yucca is just the hardiest thing ever and is doing really well. <laughs> I love, I love softly yuccas. I think they're amazing. Highly recommend to anybody who lives in Texas. <laughs> um, and then there's a few little, I don't know if you, you, can, you probably can't tell, but there's a few little agaves right here here there's another one over here this is a crepe myrtle there's also a ton of weeds guys a ton of weeds um this is a crepe myrtle bush forming i it's either white blooming or red blooming i can't i can't remember and i had had one on this side but it, i guess it died it's, uh, unless it's alive at the base here i'm not uh, oh no it has a little little tiny sprout there at the base <laughs> All right, um, so there's hope for that. I think there might be a few other little baby agaves. Oh yeah, there's there's one that's alive right there. There's a few more sprinkled throughout that are still alive, but most of the stuff didn't make it through the win the winter. Um, this trip didn't make it through the winter, and um, yeah. So we'll see how they do this summer and winter. We need to come back through a weed. It's a big goal of mine. Over here is a yellow um, knockout rose and I have another one there. I added this one in at the start of the year and that one's been in the ground for a while. Um, I have a little um, bank of coral yuccas. I'd like to bring that bank around this whole area, but I'm not entirely sure yet because I also need to plants that uh, help with weed suppression and I would say the coral yuccas don't really help with that. Um, so yeah, uh, I have my 
yellow blooming um, Pride of Barbados. It, it's coming back from roots. Not as far along as I would hope. And I had planted some seedlings in, and they are still alive, of the red blooming, or the orange blooming. So there's this one on the side, and I had planted one on the other side, but I guess that one didn't make it because I can't find it anywhere. So, yeah, but there's two seedlings over here, and those are both doing great. Swing around slowly, sorry. Over here, the bed filled with the least amount of weeds, but still weeds. Um, the um, flame acanthus, there's two on one on either side, and there's some, um, what is this? Uh, Jerusalem sage, I wanna say there's two on either side, and then a um, prickly pear cactus, and then I have, I believe this is white blooming um, crepe myrtle that's doing a lot better than when it was in the ground over there getting taken over by weeds. And I, so I moved, I transplanted all of these plants into this bed. This is its first year, it looks pretty scraggly but I, um, I have high hopes for it for next year. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of where the garden's at right now at the, I guess when this video goes up, it'll be the first day of July. Um, it's just a few days before that. Um, but things have been super hot, you know, three digits, um, just melting. Uh, and since I don't come out to the property garden uh, very often, I um, don't really water, uh, have a chance to water plants in. So I, I have learned my lesson and uh, am not going to plant any more plants out here uh, for the rest of the summer. At my own house, which I you know still also film at and, and um, garden at and all that stuff, I will continue planting at my own house because I'm there to baby the plants and water them majority of the time. I do like go on vacation with my kids a lot, not vacation, but like we leave, we go, we do tri little day trips and are away for a couple nights or whatever. We do a lot of stuff. We're pretty um, active family on the weekends usually. So sometimes I, I do still kill plants cause I don't babysit them that well. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not the best babysitter of plants um, in general. I'm just a little too distracted and I have a lot of things on my plate most of the time. However, um, I will still continue to plant at my house because I will be a lot better about watering those plants in than I would be about plants here. So uh, yeah, so don't, if you, you know, still wanna plant at your own house, don't, you know, uh, don't listen to me when I'm saying I'm not gonna plant out here at the property garden anymore. You know, uh, that's literally just because I just don't come out uh, hardly ever to, you know, definitely not enough to keep things alive. So anyhow, uh, that's the update for how things are doing and all this blistering heat. And I hope you guys are staying somewhat cool. Um, I think we're probably gonna need to replace our AC in not too long because it seems to be struggling. It's pretty old um, and it's not doing a good job keeping our house super cool. Which, you know, when you're, you spend any time out in this heat, you're, you wanna go into a nice cold house. Um, but anyhow, I hope y'all, y'all guys are all doing well and, um, keeping your plants alive, you know, but it's okay if you aren't too, cause I, I'm, I, I kill plants too. You know, you guys have seen, um, anyhow, I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.